Hi everyone, Dr. Metter here. Let's look at this problem from complete problem set number one of our diagonal forces unit. The system shown is at rest. A box, box one weighs 30 newtons. Determine all unknowns neglecting friction in the pulley and the weight of the knot and, and each string. Okay, so this tells us two important things. Our system is at rest and our box one weighs 30 newtons. So we can say box one, um, the FMG is equal to 30 newtons and our system is at rest. Let's go over that again. We went over, we went over it in a previous problem, but when we say our system is at rest, that means the acceleration, oh, you can't see that. That means, I'm gonna erase it. That means our acceleration is equal to zero. That means our force net which is equal to uh, mass times acceleration is equal to zero. That means that if we look at the force net in the vertical, it is equal to zero, which means all of the forces pulling up, or pulling up minus all of the forces pulling down are equal to zero. And this tells us that all of the forces up are equal to all of the forces added together down. Okay, same thing for horizontal. Force net in the horizontal is equal to zero. That means all of the forces pulling the system toward the right are equal or minus all of the forces uh, pulling it toward the left is equal to zero. So that means our F, all the forces to the right must be equal to and completely oppose all of the forces to the left. Okay, now that we have that out of the way, let's think about what's going on here. This is an Atwood machine where you have a line over a pulley. Okay, we have two, basically two Atwood machines and a line over a pulley. We know that the tension, this is the same line moving from here to here. So, it is experiencing the same tension throughout. So if we can determine, the same thing goes for here, same tension throughout. So if we can determine what this F of tension is here, right, relative to this box, then that F of tension, say we'll call it F of tension one for box one, is going to be equal to the tension experienced by this knot right here, this is also F of tension one. And this goes the same for this. This is F of tension two relative to box, sorry, three, relative to box three. And so this F of tension would be F of T three also. Those are equal. So how much does box two weigh? Well, so we're trying to get at what our FMG is equal to for box two. Okay, so we don't get what that is. Well, how do we get at that? Well, we we have we know it's pulling down. So if we can find what is opposing it or pulling it up, then we can start to get at what this is. So what's opposing it are the vertical components of FT1. So that would be FT1 vertical, and the vertical component of FT three, which would be FT three vertical, all right? We also have, and it's not opposing the box, but we also have, remember, the horizontal components. We can't forget about that. So the horizontal one and the horizontal component, G horizontal uh, for three, for line three. Okay, so we know that What's pulling up is equal to what's pulling down. So we can say that our FMG for box two is equal to our FT vertical for one plus our FT vertical for three, right? But how do we get at what FT1 and FTV3 are? Well, we're given one bit of information. Okay, and that tells us that the FMG for box one is 30 newtons. Well, the system is at rest. 
So we know that this must mean that it's balanced in the upward direction. So our FT1 must equal 30 newtons also. Well, because this is an Atwood machine and this is the same line, that means that the FT here is also equal to 30 newtons. So now we've gotten, we know the overall magnitude of this force and we can get at what this FT1 in the vertical is because we can say that our force of tension in the vertical is equal to the force of tension overall times the sine of theta. And our theta here is 51 degrees. Okay, so our, F, our FT F in the vertical is equal to FT1, which is 30 newtons, times the sine of, oops, of 51. Okay. So that gives us, let me see where my problem is. Okay, 23.3. So this gives us 23.3 newtons. And so this right here is equal to 23.3 newtons. Okay, so that's one component. All right, so we've got this. We're looking for this. We've got this. Okay, so now we have to try to get an FTV3, or FT, uh, the, the force of tension for line three in the vertical. Well, it's not as easy this time because we can't, because we're not given the weight of box three or the mass. But if we can calculate, remember this relationship that everything to the right must equal everything to the left so that this, the system can be balanced and at rest. So therefore, if we can get it at what FT1 in the horizontal is, then we can say, okay, well, we know that's equal to FT3 in the horizontal. So the force of tension in the horizontal for line three. So if we say, let's see, how could we get at this? We know that our FT in the horizontal is equal to the overall magnitude of the force, right? So F of T1, which we have, we found, oh, sorry, wrong one, which we have given, um, times the cosine of theta. And we have theta to be 51. So we can say the force of tension one in the horizontal is equal to the force of tension one, which is 30 newtons, times the cosine of 51. And that gives us a, let's see, that gives us 18.9. Okay, so now we're chipping away at the information. Now we know that this horizontal force is also equal to this horizontal force right here. So we know this is equal to 18.9 newtons, 0.9 newtons, and this is equal to 18.9 newtons. Well, now we know what the horizontal force magnitude is, and we know the angle for this line, our theta. So we can say, okay, well, we know that our, our force of tension in the horizontal is equal to the overall tension of the force times the cosine of theta. So we can say 18.9 newtons is equal to FT3 times the cosine of 21. And that gives us an overall, remember we're finding this right here, FT3 is equal to, let's see, F T3 is equal to, let me find it, 20.2 newtons. All right, so this is equal to 20.2 newtons. Now, that's great, but it's not getting us what we need yet, right? We need the force of tension in the vertical. 
So how can we do that? Well, we can go on a little bit further and say we know that, and I'm gonna do it over here, the force of tension three in the vertical is equal to the force of tension, overall force of tension times the sine of theta, which is 21. So we can say F T three vertical is equal to um, F T three times the sine. Oops, sorry. Race, erase. Uh, okay, back. F T three, which we just calculated, is 20.2 newtons, and we can say this is the sine of 21. So this gives us. Um, a force of tension in the vertical for rope three to be um, 7.24 newtons. Okay, so now we have this. Okay, so I'm just going to say our FMG for box two right here is equal to our F of tension in the vertical for box one or for rope one plus our F of tension in the vertical for three for rope three and we get that this is equal to um, 23.3 plus 7.24 newtons and that is equal to 30 0.6 newtons. So the how much does our box two weigh is 30.2 newtons. Now, how much does box oh didn't mean to press that out? How much does box three weigh? Well, we know this is an Atwood machine and we know how it works. So the force of tension here, which we calculated to be 20.2 newtons, is equal to the force of tension here. And we know that should be equal to the force of weight here because it's at rest. And therefore, whatever is pulling down must be, must be equal to whatever is pulling up. So our force of weight would be equal to 20.2 Newtons. And so we have 20.2 Newtons here. Okay, just take it step by step. Let me know if you have any questions. Good luck. Talk to you soon. Bye.